So, good morning. Good morning. So, who are you? My name is Rovinda Appelman, uh, and I live in Amsterdam, and I'm super excited about this interview. And what are you doing in Amsterdam? What I do is I run an expat platform called AMS Connected, um, and we try to do everything that all the other expat organizations don't do. So basically in Amsterdam you have numerous, numerous opportunities to meet up for a drink or to just have a bite with some other expats or even locals. But what's really missing is really taking them out of their bubble and really doing stuff that connects them to the city and that also makes them an active citizen of the city. Okay, and, and, and I know many stories of entrepreneurs starting new platforms about car sharing, food sharing, mm -hmm. everything, but I, have, I, I haven't heard about this. Uh, so how did you come up with the idea? I came up with the idea because I've lived in many countries around the world myself and whenever I was there I really loved to connect with the locals because they really taught me something new. And when I came back to Amsterdam I really saw that my friends sometimes had a difficulty in connecting with me again uh, because I wasn't the same person when I came back from living abroad. I see that a lot of Dutch people have that experience and they also seek that, that little bit of extra in this Dutch society these days. So the thing is that that really for me comes together with expats. I really actively seeked out the expat community here in Amsterdam to see what was going on. So when I became part of it as a natural organizer that I am, I really immediately started organizing parties for expats as well, sometimes up to 800 people. And it was amazing. It was amazing to see so many people come together, just have a great time, connect, party, flirt, everything that you can imagine. But I again saw that after that, everybody just dispersed and there was not a real connection, not really a friendship that was made. And for me, that was very important. So then I came up with just doing it myself. I really come from a household where that's very normal to just start doing stuff by yourself. Um, my mom always taught me that life is a party but you have to hang up the balloons yourself. So for me it was time to then disconnect from all of that and just step into something smaller. Because we have so many expats here in the city, um, I think on a yearly basis it grows with around five to 10,000 sometimes even. So it really depends on what can you do with that, what do they want and how can we make sure that they actually know what's going on in the city. Okay, you said, okay, you just started, but how did you mm -hmm. start? I started actually just by uh, organizing random events. So I like to do stuff out of the ordinary. So for example, to go ice carting or to help out in a food bank or to meet up with uh, the famous tattoo artist uh, of this city, of course, and just really see what's going on here in Amsterdam culture. So for me, it was just about putting an event up. Uh, I used the meetup platform for that a lot and just getting people together. And just by word of mouth, that started spreading. And by now, it's one of the fastest growing groups in the city. Okay, cool. And and uh, in what way do you keep people for long term uh, connected to, uh, to your initiative? What I really see is that people love, of course they love good service, so they really care about that, but what they also see is that they will come back if they see that the event was organized uh, based from a good initiative or a social innovation feeling or just being uh, connected to whatever you see out there. So they don't just want to be part of a commercial initiative, but they really want to be part of this city. For example, a lot of expats have no idea about the new commercial initiatives that are starting even at the marine uh, territory near Central Station. Why? Because that news is just uh, only conveyed in Dutch normally and not in English. So they really miss that extra connection to the city center to really be part of that as well. Another example is volunteer work. They truly want to do that. For example, I have a lot of Americans asking me actively, Rowan, how can I reach out to charities here? And is it a problem if I don't speak the language? And what they normally encounter is that that is a big, big problem actually. And they don't know how to go around that. So it's such a big part of Amsterdam culture by now. We're in the top five cities around the world with an expat community and the activities going on in an expat community. But somehow we still miss out on that. And the expat center in the city is not enough for that. And because people see that I actually care about that and that I actually try to connect them in one step further, they come back. Okay, cool. And, and, and are you doing this uh, full time or do you also have a job uh, besides that? <laughs> I wish I could do this full time, but no, this is really my hobby. Um, I work for two other companies, basically. I do a fellowship with the US government based on social innovation. Uh, it's with Meridian International Center. So I was just in the U.S. for a couple months and I really worked on social innovation projects there and I, for example, did a case study on Detroit and how Detroit is trying to grow itself again after a bankruptcy. And on the side with that, I also work here uh, in Amsterdam and I work for EMC Weekend School 
and I'm the national coordinator of their alumni network. So I make sure that kids uh, from disadvantaged neighborhoods who go to our schools afterwards also have a network that they can fall back on and connect them with all the companies around that really want to work with them. Okay, so you really the the, the, the the person who's really connecting all uh, all that and other people together. Mm -hmm. uh, and what way do you take your lessons from from your other two jobs into this voluntarily uh, 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 initiative? Yeah, what I really see is that people sometimes just need to get um, an an experience beyond whatever they've experienced before. Uh, people usually stick to their safe side. So you have a lot of groups in Amsterdam who just come together, uh, just meet up, just share their own cultures again because they feel comfortable with that. But as soon as you take people one step further and take them out of their comfort zone, you can see real growth happening, but you also see connecting happening. So for me, coming from this job where I nurture this alumni network and working with these kids, I interact a lot with the Suriname, Moroccan, Turkish families. And for me, it's really important to also connect that to the expats. You can basically see them as knowledge migrants and normal migrants, if you want to call it. And it's really interesting to connect them. So for example, last week we organized an iftar. Uh, and on one night, we had people from 20 different countries come together. And so many people afterwards came to me and said, wow, I first of all didn't even know what an iftar was. And second, when are you organizing it again? So people really want that connection, but somehow people don't really reach out to do that. And how do you see, because she says, okay, uh, uh, we have to take them out of their own bubble mm -hmm. uh, and, 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 and let them make the, 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 uh, a, 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 a first step. Mm -hmm. how, do, how do you get people doing that? Because I think that's one of the biggest challenges uh, in the is. world. Yes. <laughs> well, what I've seen working in Amsterdam a lot is that you just need to have a basic activity. Of course, if something looks really inspirational or really new, uh, that will help them out. So for example, last night we did a gymnastics session with the old traditional Dutch game, Apenkoi. A lot of people around the world have never even heard of this game. And for them to come in and do something active and something new was very, very fun. And I had a long waiting list for that event as well. But what you really see is that people need a small push. And the push usually comes from doing something out of the ordinary. So I always also look for all the events going on in Amsterdam to see where we can connect together for that. And second of all, people just need to do something. You have a lot of people that really wish to connect, but they're just too scared or they're not used to it. So I always make sure that every event I organize has at least one activity so that afterwards everybody at least has a topic to start talking on. And usually you see that people are like, wow, that was really amazing. Or, oh, let's do this again. Or how did you experience that? And from there on, you see that the topics come. So in my opinion, people love new stuff. So it's a lot of organizing new ideas and people really love to do something. So they at least have something to talk about. And I think but that's uh, uh, one thing I hear in your story. Uh, I think that most people are more higher educated. Is that mm -hmm. right? I would say so indeed. Uh, it's usually the people that have lived somewhere else around the world um, and especially expats in Amsterdam. On average, the salary is still above 60 to 100 grand. So we're talking high skilled people uh, with a really well paid job. Uh, but even those people really want to connect. Uh, and most of them even don't want to talk about their work. They really want to leave that behind for a second and just be, let's call it, a normal person. And just for a second, not be CEO of a company or be a really, really well paid IT expert and just be their own person again. So you really see that, yes, it is mostly that. Uh, you also see that the Dutch people, around 25% of the people in this expat community in Amsterdam, have a Dutch heritage. Most of them have also studied abroad or have worked abroad. Okay, cool. And and, and what way, because you're organizing quite some uh, offline activities, uh, mm -hmm. like uh, the Apoco you just mentioned. Yes. Um, uh, uh, is there also an online platform where people are exchanging uh, knowledge or lessons or experiences? So far, we have this online community. And what we now do more and more is that we organize events where uh, they can showcase what they do. So for example, we'll have an in-house day with a company, or we will have a knowledge uh, afternoon on uh, a specific topic, or we will have a round, dis uh, round the table discussion on a specific problem for someone who's working on a startup. So for the first time now, we're looking at ways of connecting this platform beyond. So I started this platform a year ago. Uh, we're now up to 1,700 members. And we're now looking at ways to expand on that and to make sure that people can share their knowledge as well. So we're starting with that, but it's still in the beginning pages. And, and you also say, we. So uh, are there more people helping you with this platform? Yes, I have an amazing team of around uh, 10 organizers who help me all on a voluntary basis. 
everybody loves being part of this. Um, and most of these people actually came in because of an event that I organized myself. So they really loved what they saw and they said, okay, because you really put so much time and effort into it, I want to help out as well. So I have, for example, someone specializing in the active stuff. I have someone specializing in all the volunteer work. We, for example, uh, package uh, packages uh, at the food bank or we help them at the toys bank. Uh, we help garden gardens in the community gardens here in the city. Uh, so whatever someone loves to do, we let them do it because I firmly believe that you have to work from your own passion else you're not motivated to do it. Yeah, we, uh, we, I, I, I really uh, agree in that. And mm -hmm. how do you feel yourself as a person? How, how do you keep the right balance in between? Because this sounds like there are uh, many other uh, 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 opportunities uh, also to, 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 uh, to start, so new events, mm -hmm. new platforms. How do you manage for yourself uh, the, the balance between uh, this and your other two jobs? Because you only got uh, 24 hours in a day, I guess. <laughs> Yes, I know. My boyfriend's sometimes not <coughs> happy with all the stuff that I'm doing uh, because I also love traveling. So I travel on a basis of, I would say, two times a month as well. Um, for me, this is my passion. This is my life. Uh, this is really how I was taught <coughs> to live. And this is also really how I grew up and what I really love doing. So for me, it's not work. Sometimes I really have to force myself to be offline. Uh, so I would say that that is my moment to really step away from it. And I really have to force myself to focus on one thing at a time. Uh, I think that's a problem of our generation these days, but I try to focus for specific days on specific tasks. And I hope that that will help me in the future as well. And how do you manage that? Because I, I'm also trying to get Ivo to do that, but uh, <laughs> yeah, for me, it's, 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 it's not a case yet. So, but, but, so, so how do you manage that, that for yourself? My secret, wow. Uh, that's actually a really good question. You know, I, I had this discussion yesterday as well. I think the people of our generation, I dare say that we're of the same generation, by the way. Um, I think people of our generation will have a change in jobs. We don't have a job from nine to five, and we definitely don't have a job for 40 hours a week. And most of us by now are creating our own work and our own content and our own passion. And sometimes my parents don't understand, and especially my environment doesn't understand, um, but I see that this is the way forward. So how do I combine it? I think that everybody around us is trying to combine it in the same way. Um, I think for me, I'm still learning in that as well. Um, I really, for example, try to close my laptop two hours before I go to bed. And even that sometimes is very difficult. But as long as you're doing something that you really love, I think it's very hard to stop that. So I cannot give you my perfect solution, but I try to really focus and also work a lot offline. I prefer to have meetings for half an hour and discuss everything for the upcoming week than just send 120 emails back and forth for a whole week. Okay, cool. And and uh, you're really good in, in bringing different cultures together, uh, despite mm -hmm. of the language and the culture and the habits of, of different uh, groups. Mm -hmm. uh, when you look at what's happening over here in the world, and let's say in Europe uh, with the uh, Greece uh, uh, conflict uh, we have <laughs> yes. here th these days, the, the, the more old school leaders, they have no idea how to, 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 to make the right mix and balance uh, between these cultures. So what do you think from your experience, from your things you have done uh, for, for, for so far, can the more old school leaders can learn uh, how to yeah, um, make the right balance between different cultures and then also, mm -hmm. despite of the different languages and, 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 and habits, work together and, and, and do things? I think it's the question of our generation uh, because everybody is interconnected. Our worlds are so interconnected. We see so many migrants trying to come in to Europe as well. Um, and we see people fight on both sides of the spectrum. Should we allow this? Should we not? Should we open our society? Will it change? Is that a bad thing? Those are all questions that everybody has a different answer on. So it's very difficult to give my opinion on that as well. What I do think, I come from the NATO world. Um, up to a year ago, I was in charge of their youth department. And what I really see that NATO is focusing on the youth right now. Everybody around us is looking for those young professionals to pull in or to give startup space to really showcase new things. And all these foundations that by now are really looking at ways to improve education or to give people a chance to think outside of the box. A lot of people around me in Amsterdam are very negative about where it's going. I see my family also being afraid. And for me, actually, I'm one of the few optimistic people in my own environment because I see how many people around me are busy with change. I think by now, everybody that I talk to wants to have a social aspect within their job. So we're mostly by now thinking about making the world a better place, even if that is in a commercial way. And then really thinking about the world in a way where you just have to make money or just need to have a good job. 
And that's a slow mindset change. I see that with the students as well, uh, the people I work with for my alumni coordinator job. Um, and also a project I started three weeks ago together with my business partner, Kuhn Geisels, where we work on the Amsterdam Language Cafe, where we bring people together to practice languages. And with the money we raised there, we set up a charity in Amsterdam New West to help kids learn languages as well. And what we see is that these kids really also struggle with the idea of identity and the idea of active citizenship. What can you still say when do you insult someone and what is the way forward? I think that it's very, very important to focus on identity. I see more and more people in governments doing that, also the Dutch government. So I'm very happy that the dialogue is starting, but the way forward is still very tricky. I think the more we give young people a platform, the better it is because let's face it, in the end, around half the people on this planet have an age below 35, and we are the next generation that will have to take over. And uh, <coughs> when you're looking back uh, uh, to your expert platform, mm -hmm. uh, um, what is the average age of the, uh, of the members over there? Are yeah. they also of, uh, of the new generation? I, I would say so. Of course, you can doubt or debate on what that age is, but uh, the average user on an expert platform is between the ages of, I would say, 28 and 38. So it's normally people who have lived abroad or who are in their second or third job and people who are still, maybe not still at the point of uh, having their own family and who are still traveling around the world for jobs as well. So it's really those people who are not very much settled down yet, but people who are still able to travel a lot and to, uh, to go out and experience. So I would say that on average, even 60% is single as well. Uh, just because people travel so much and they, they just want to have a great time and they want to meet people and be connected to the city, but not necessarily all settle down yet. Yeah, and, 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 and how do you think uh, they, they can keep the same energy when they have settled down? Uh, like, uh, I guess uh, you, you don't, don't have uh, children right now. No, uh, I don't. <coughs> I, I, do, I do have since two years two children, so I, I, mm -hmm. I, I, I recognize the, 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 the new balance uh, of, of, of searching. Uh, mm -hmm. but, uh, in what way do you think you can make a new balance when you are sitting down? So how can you manage that this new positive energy mm -hmm. uh, uh, will also have a sustainable flow and not will end when you have your first one or two children and then mm -hmm. uh, you will uh, 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 live your life like uh, all the others do? Mm -hmm. I think what I see around me is that parents now, by now, actually very, very actively uh, create a family day. So I see a lot of the entrepreneurial friends that I have really say, sorry guys, but on Sunday, that's my family day. I am very actively involved with my children on that day and I make sure that I'm completely with them. Um, and some of them even shut off all their electronic equipment for that. I think that in the end, um, some things can be combined. I know that a lot of my friends are traveling around the world and take their children along, uh, especially now if they're not in the, in the school age yet, or they have a tutor with them, or they provide a tutor for them over there. Of course, that is not up to everybody. Not everybody has the financial means for that, but I do think it's a struggle. I see a lot of my friends, especially my female friends of my age, um, struggling with the question, should I have a child right now? Or should I wait for another six years and have it later on in my life when my career is a bit more established? I see a lot of people around me say that they don't have time for a child. Uh, my boyfriend, who is also an expat, um, is Austrian and 32 years old. And even with him, I'm already debating when we should have children if we have them. So I think it's more and more a question of can you all combine it? And if so, how can you? And I think it really, really comes down to time management. And that is a pain in the ass, but it's necessary. Yeah, I think time management and also setting up the right priorities, like we all said, so like on Sunday, just uh, getting offline and, and, yes. and enjoy your family. And uh, what, uh, because you're now uh, 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 busy for a year with the platform, yes. um, what is your uh, goal, let's say in five years? Mm -hmm. What my goal is, well, by now I'm looking more and more with the city, um, really the, the city of Amsterdam, the municipality had, to really see what we can do and how we can further this platform. So it's more and more about how do you really pull them into something on a more structural basis. Uh, for example, we work together with six charities in the city and we're now looking at ways to sustain that and to make sure that people can find it even on an easier scale. I'm also looking at a lot of um, other platforms in the city uh, to see how we can work together and basically co-share and really uh, influence each other like that, but also educate each other like that and inspire each other like that. 
So for me, the way forward is that the platform becomes bigger, but also that the platform is more interconnected. So that we also try to help back some of the things in society, and that we also make sure that we're involved in some of the projects. A lot of expats are very proud that because they come to uh, the language events that Kuhn and I organize, they can help provide for language lessons for children in Amsterdam New West. So like this, they see kind of a circle economy coming up. Expats really have a budget, they have a will, and they have a lot of time that they wish to invest as well. Um, and now slowly other parties are waking up to that as well. So more and more people that I talk to on a business skill say to me, oh wow, yes, the expat group is there as well. We should really focus on them. So you see that people are becoming aware of them. You also see that people finally acknowledge the fact that they are people that live in the city and that they are people who are not going away. Um, and you see that we need them. Even if you look at IT jobs for a second, we have around 25,000 IT jobs that need um, someone to fill up the position on an annual basis. And we only have around 3,000 IT students that graduate. So how do you fill up that gap? So more and more people become aware and they start facilitating that as well. And my dream is that that facilitation becomes even better and also has an English news service for them as well. Because a lot of people by now are not reaching the expats in the way that they can be reached. Cool. Okay, sounds good. So I wish uh, you uh, very much luck and, and, and success with that. Thank and you. Uh, thanks for the interview. No worries. Have a great afternoon. Thank you.